Think on this. Everything we use, everything we buy, everything we see has been designed by someone somewhere. Design is the one feature shared by all products in the shops. But design isn't just about the way that something looks. It's about what it does and how it does what it does and how you interact with it. And in the ultra-competitive world of gadgets, design is everything. But what does it take to design a successful gadget? Well, this week, Susie and I were challenged to switch from being gadget testers to gadget creators. Yeah, our task was to design our own gadget from scratch. And, well, it was as simple and as daunting as that. To come up with ideas for our own gadget creations, we needed to be inspired. So we came here to the world-famous Design Museum in London. It celebrates the richness and creativity in everything from fashion to industrial design. But this is the area we're interested in, product design. It's packed full of great examples of beautiful-looking gadgets, like this phone. Look at it, it's lovely. Lovely round edges, a, a shiny surface. You just want to stroke it. Maybe put it in a little velvet pouch and covet it. This Japanese Infobar mobile phone incorporates voice-guided GPS, a TV tuner, and an RFID chip that functions as e-cash. Another great example is this Pizza Cobra table lamp. Hidden hinges allow it to collapse into a coil, hiding all the workings and the six LED bulbs inside. The 16 gadgets in here have been nominated by a group of highly respected design experts as pinnacles of tech design. But what makes those gadgets so special? Yeah, and if we're going to have to come up with our own design classics, we're going to have to understand what makes a design classic. So we've got one of the country's top designers to tell us everything we need to know to design our own gadget. This is David Fisher, the Consumer Technology Design Director at Seymour Powell, a company that have brought the world the cordless kettle and the first pocket-sized mobile phone. If anyone could tell us where to start, then he could. David, for our challenge, what should we be thinking about? What should our approach be? There's two approaches. We can start on the outside and very much look at the skin of the object and how it appears to you visually and then work our way in. Or we can start on the inside and very much look at it in terms of functionality and how that functionality will deliver itself to the surface. I think we need to start thinking about it from a visual point of view, what the thing's going to look like, am I going to be attracted to this object in the first place to get near it mm. and, and kind of investigate it further. We've also got to think about what's inside it, you know, what are the core ingredients, a bit like a, a chef, you know, making a recipe, choosing the best ingredients, the relevant ingredients, what elements are going to go well together. I think the we is a really good example of inside out. This is all about functionality, engaging with the content, engaging with how you use it, or as opposed to something like the iPhone. The beauty of it is you're attracted by the gorgeous exterior, the veneer, the beautiful materials, but inside the functionality is as good as the exterior. I think I've got it, right? It's a phone which interfaces with a games console. That you, can, that you can use physically? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You got it, that's it. <laughs> Rubber band, <laughs> Rubber done band job done. <laughs> <laughs> David had given us food for thought, but we now had to decide how we should approach our own designs. It strikes me that there's got to be an element of compromise, really, between the functionality and the style, don't you think? Yeah, I, I do, but as long as you start with the functionality, you know, first, decide what it's got to do, and then design an interface, a look, a feel that supports oh, no, no. that. No, I don't think so. I, I would start with the way that it looks and feels, the image of it, obviously bringing in the functionality, but I think I'd use the design as the starting point. Yeah, but if you're going to design a phone, you start with, uh, you know, you start with the in don't you, what it's going to do, the functionality, how it's going to work, what emails it can do. No. So, our stalls were set out. I was going down the functionality route. Yeah, and I wanted to design something that was really gorgeous and desirable. Yeah, but for the next stage of our challenge, things were about to get very serious because we both had to come up with an idea each and get prototypes made. And at the end, I headed to the shops to get some inspiration. While I headed home to ponder. With a whole world full of potential gadgets to design, we had to narrow down the field a bit. I was looking for something I could improve, something that would inspire me. To be perfectly honest with you, just something I could take apart. <laughs> the problem I was having was that so much time, effort and money has gone into designing all the obvious gadgets that there was very little room to improve them. Not mobile phones, not TVs, and definitely not MP3 players. I wouldn't dare compete against the iPod. Whatever I came up with needed to be innovative, aesthetic and unobtrusive. Three principles of good design. Then it hit me. Box, 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 box. 
Box. Box. All the cameras I could see were very samey. Not one of them set the world alight visually. None of them make me feel really excited. None of them jump off the shelf and make me want to own them. I mean, imagine if Apple or someone like Apple designed a camera. That, that is the level that I'm going for. The digital camera market is worth £900 million. Perfect to tap into. But to do it, I was going to need some help, and I knew just the place to go to. That ah, brilliant idea, look. Hey, joystick phone. It's perfect. Meanwhile, I'd found inspiration in the strangest places. No, not there. Right, I've got the idea, and it's come from these, these batteries. Actually, they're not normal batteries, they're USB. So you whack them in the side of your laptop and you charge them up. What I want to do is do something interesting with the USB device. These USB cell batteries made me think about the wider world of USB and memory sticks. It's predicted that 750 million USB memory drives will be sold in 2009. That's a lot of people storing a lot of data on these portable devices. At the moment, though, they're all too easily dropped or forgotten about, and that's the issue I wanted to address. I wanted to make them truly functional by getting rid of all the unnecessary casing, to make them even smaller and attaching them to a badge so they wouldn't get lost. It's durable, uh, it's useful, and it's definitely simple. Maybe too simple. To get help with my design, I called on the experts at Coventa. Coventa have developed a wide range of products from concept cars to perfume bottles. I'm hoping they can help me realise my plan. Have I got a brief for you? I want something a bit different that's really beautiful, that's really stylish. OK. OK. Well, it should be a problem, and I think we can deliver some great concepts for you. Oh, that's just the answer I want. <laughs> we spent the first hour or so sketching through some rough ideas before Jules refined some of our favourites, drawing neater sketches of a whole range of concepts. The shape of the camera used to be dictated by the need to fit the film in. These days, with memory cards and hard drives, there's no reason other than tradition for the box shape, something we steered well away from by incorporating some great new technologies. You sit onto a wireless charging pad, everything would just be a touchscreen interface. You could get home and, and project onto the screen and then everyone could view. A screen is flexible and rolls up. It would be a very simple, Cylindrical. almost like cosmetic type shape whether we go with something it's, like it's this, very interesting, this interesting concept. concept we narrowed down the ideas till we had the technologies that would work with the look i wanted what i'd like to do is to combine this with this i combined a wireless charging pad that conducts power without wires a flexible fold-out oled touchscreen and a miniature projector incredibly by 2009 projectors will be incorporated into mobile phones to project onto a 60 inch screen i wanted to be ahead of the game <laughs> OK. Well, we'll put all of this together for you uh, and generate an, uh, a concept that sort of embodies everything that you want that to be. OK. And, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Meanwhile, I'd called on some help too. Sit down. Shall I show you what I've been working on? Yeah. You're not going to take the mickey out of me, are you? No, uh, I'll try not to. All right, OK. It's one stage up from Stickmen. Rod's an industrial product design student at Derby University, and he helped me thrash out some ideas. That's the concept, a wearable USB device. There are wearable USB memory sticks already on the market, like these bracelets, but whether you want to wear them or not is another matter. You wouldn't want to wear that, would you? I mean, it's silly. It's not very cool. No, it's not cool at all. So the memory stick badge that I was planning to make needed to be both functional and attractive so people would want to wear it. We went for a character-based design for our USB badge, something that would appeal to kids, something they could swap and trade. That sort of culture, yeah, like that, exactly, that's exactly it. Rod then went away and built up a prototype for me in record time. He took a children's toy, pulled it apart, and then built a housing for the USB electronics to go inside. Rod's done a great job. This is exactly what we talked about. The only problem is you can only get so far with things that already exist. I was happy with the concept, but I needed to refine the design further. We needed to make the badge from scratch, so it was, well, sort of badge-shaped. For that, I called in a model maker. Meanwhile, the guys at Coventa had sent me a proof copy of the camera concept to check over. With my blessing, they were able to create a final 3D design. Now we were both ready to produce our prototypes. My model maker was Mike, a vinyl modeler who makes exactly the kind of things I wanted from scratch. He modeled the design out of putty and then made a cast to house the USB. My designs were sent to Oto, a company who build concepts for the likes of Sony. They worked out the best way to build the actual product, working out how all the parts would fit together. 
Once done, those measurements were fed into a computer which controlled some hefty machines. Finally, it was all coming together for both of us. It had been a long, hard process. All the guys worked into the night, but it was worth it. It's time to find out who did the best job. They're both here with their gadgets, and quite honestly, none of us know which one's going to come out on top. Susie, remind us what yours is all about. Uh, well, I've got the benchmark for the next generation of compact digital camera with this gorgeous little rollout screen. Ooh. Ooh. Jason, yours? Uh, John, mine's called the US Badge. It's a USB memory stick. It's wearable storage in a badge. Right, let's get on with it. First up, I took both of the gadgets out onto the streets to do a bit of market research. We asked 50 people in Birmingham what they thought of the gadgets and which one they'd buy. USB stick, the camera. The camera, the USB stick. And the results really were pretty conclusive because out of the 50 people, 40 voted for Susie's oh, camera. Yeah. Don't celebrate just yet. Oh, hold it, hold it because there. next we sent both of your gadgets, complete with a full spec and a dummy press release, to one of the most important, most powerful people in the whole of the British gadget industry. Jeremy Fennell is product buyer for the Dixon Stores Group that includes PC World and Curry's. They're market leaders with £8 billion of turnover, and Jeremy's responsible for what gets stocked in the stores. Now, Jeremy was really enthusiastic. He actually said he'd stock both gadgets. No. Really? And of Susie's <laughs> camera, he said, if it existed, would completely reinvigorate the market and be completely unique. Wow. However, he did sound a note of caution. He said it's a very futuristic concept and the cost of the new technologies may price it out of the market. Oh, small print. <laughs> Jason, though, your designs he absolutely loved. He said, really? great idea, really had legs. He could see them selling lots and lots of your badges. So... Overall, yours just has the edge. Twins! It's one all, which also means that the final decision rests with one of the leading names in world design. I'd like you to meet Dick Powell. Dick is from Seymour Powell. They designed the world's first pocketable mobile phone and the first hydrogen fuel cell motorcycle. Now, he's already seen both of your designs, yep. but uh, I think he needs a, an extra brief, starting with you, Susie. No pressure, then. Not at all. <laughs> Go give us a cell. Come OK. Yeah. Well, Dick, as you know, I wanted to design a camera that was very different, cutting edge with all the technology. So I came up with this wireless technology, of course, to uh, load your pictures onto your computer, and also inductive charging, because I hate all the little kind of rubbery yeah, ports yeah, that you've got them. and yeah. I can't bear wires. Yeah. So we've got this beautiful sleek camera here. We've got a pull-out OLED flexible screen wow. which doubles up as your viewfinder and your control panel. It's touch screen. But what about this? A little projector to the size of 60 inches that you can just pick on the wall and say, look, here's the shot I just took. There you go. It, it's, it's almost a piece of glamour. So for a woman, it could be resembling a, a lipstick canister mm. or something, you know, makeup case. But I wanted it to be for guys as well. So I wanted it to be quite funky and cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's managed to do that with the fact that it's black and silver. And then you've just got this gadget show blue that we use. I think that's sort of that ultraviolet blue. It's, it's very blue. cool, yeah. <gasps> it's your turn. How am I going to follow that? <laughs> Come on. OK. Hi, Dick. Right, let's Look, As I sit, I know what you're thinking. Jace, nice badge. But it's not just a badge, it's a wearable storage device. A better example is another design that we've done, uh, where his head comes out, so it's actually okay. part of the device. So that's a, yeah. a working one gig memory stick right there, if you want to just grab it. God, it's tiny, isn't it? And yeah. the concept yeah. is to try and capture some of that sort of wearable vinyl toy market. OK, got it. Right, Dick. Decision time. What I'd like to do is actually give us a brief summary of what you think of each product, and most importantly, which one you think's best. OK, well, I think they're both brilliant, actually. They're two different things. This is very much a toy, collectible sort of a thing, but it's an interesting product. What we have over there is Susie's camera. It's something that's been very professionally done, so it's extremely credible. It brings together a lot of new technologies, which are just around the corner. What you've done is you've managed to wrap them all up in a really compelling product, so definitely I choose this. Yay! Yay. Well, Yay. Oh, brilliant. Want to pass into it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Get those paintings no, in right stop, now. Stop looking at my camera too close. Um, and on that fabulous note for me, um, it's the end of the show. Thank you very much for your help.